So I had previously made a tutorial about how to split or slice text inside Adobe Illustrator. And this video is sort of an evolution on that, where not only are we going to take the text and split it up, but we can also shift it to be a different font or different weights of a font as shown in the lower example right here. So this is actually pretty quick to do so we can just get going, but you are going to want to make sure as we get going that you have your properties window open. It'll be very helpful. So if you don't have a properties window open right now inside Illustrator, just go to the window menu at the top and then properties is about two thirds of the way down. If you don't see a check mark next to it, just click it and it will show up somewhere. If you do see the check mark, it's somewhere on your screen. So you just have to find it. And if you want to use the exact same font I'm using in this video, I will place a link in the description for you to download it. It's totally free. It's called Allegria. And we're going to use a few different weights of the font, including regular black as well as bold to create this sort of version of a split font below. So once you get going and download that font, or you can use any font you want, or even use multiple fonts to create an even more intense effect, totally up to you. But to get started, you just want to go over to your toolbar and then use the type tool. You can also hit T on your keyboard to select it and then just click once and start typing. So I'm just going to type split in all caps, just like I did in the examples. And then I'm enlarging this by just dragging over the side and holding shift as I do it. So it stays well proportioned. And this is the very first starting stage. So what I'm going to do next is there's three different font weights for my example. So you can adjust this depending on how you want your end example to work because I have the black and then I believe this is the regular and then the bold is that one right there. So I'm just going to click on the top one, this top example of the type that I've already written out. And then I'm going to hold alt on a PC or option on a Mac and then just click, hold and drag it down. And as I drag it down, I'm going to hold shift just to keep it perfectly aligned with the type on the top. And then I'm going to do that exact same thing one more time. So we can have all three weights of the font. So I'm going to hold alt on a PC or option on a Mac, click, hold and drag while holding shift and then bring this one down. And then inside the properties window, you can actually just change the weight of the font or the entire font altogether in the character section when that particular font is selected. So I'm going to move this one to be, actually I'll just keep this regular. I'll take the middle one and change that from regular to bold. And then in the very top one, I'm going to select that and then change it from regular to black, which will give three different variations of this font for us to go ahead and split. And then the next thing you're going to want to do is just click on each font and then right click. And then from that menu, you want to click create outlines. And then you're just going to want to do this to each one of these three different fonts, because these will have to be outlines in order for you to do the next step. And if you, for some reason, don't have a mouse with two buttons, I believe on a Mac, you hold either option or possibly command, but I think it's option. So when you click option and then click, it should bring up that, that right click menu. And also, if you want to save your font somewhere before doing this so you don't outline it and lose what you've done, feel free to do that. I do that very commonly. I have that right here for myself. But what we're going to want to do now is actually go back over to the toolbar again. And then we want to use the line segment tool, which is also backslash on your keyboard as a shortcut. So just click that. I'm actually going to change this. So right now, when I click that, you can see it has a fill over here in the toolbar and no stroke but I actually wanted to have a stroke and then no fill. So I'm just going to hit this little arrow icon, which will swap those two. And if for some reason you have like a solid color in your fill, instead of nothing, you can just click on that fill and then click on the, the none box on the lower right hand side. It looks like a white box with a red diagonal line going through it so that you have a stroke and you can tell it's a stroke because there's a section missing out of the middle and then no fill. So with that line segment tool selected, I'm just going to click, hold and drag it off to the right and then hold shift so that it's a perfectly horizontal line. Although if you want this to be on some sort of funky angle, feel free to do that too. It's all totally personal preference. And then I'm just going to use the black arrow, click that line and then hold alt or option on a Mac, drag it down and then do that one more time for the bottom one. So these will be the lines that we use to actually split this text up. So the next step is actually really easy. I just want to align this line that's going through the type to be perfectly centered on the text so that in each one of these three different font weights, it's splitting it in the perfect middle as opposed to at different points, which would make a different style of effect, which if that's what you're going for, feel free, but that's not what I'm going for. So 
What I'm going to do is use that black arrow and you can just select that or hit V on your keyboard if it's not selected. Highlight over the top text, which is both the line and then the font itself. And then in the align menu in the properties window, there's one called vertical align center. I'm just going to click that. In this case, I seem to have that perfectly aligned anyways, but it would fix this line right here. So if I had it really low for some reason, I highlight over these hit vertical align center. It just moves the font and the line to be perfectly aligned on the center. So I'm going to do that exact same thing for each one of these three different fonts. And it looks like all three of them, I somehow did a really good job of just sticking that line in the middle anyways, but it's helpful to do that just to be totally sure. And then the next step is actually where we're going to split these fonts apart. So same thing using the black arrow highlight over the text and the line, but this time we're going to go to pathfinder. So the pathfinder window will be in your properties window or the pathfinder section will be in your properties window and there'll be a three dot menu to the lower right of the pathfinder menu. So click that and then there's shape modes and then there's pathfinders. We want to do pathfinders and then the one to the furthest left in pathfinders. When you highlight over it, it'll say divide. Just click that and it actually went ahead and split this text. So if I click this, you can see there's now a line going through the type. And if I right click and then ungroup, we can then select each individual portion of each individual letter. So I'm going to do the exact same thing for these two lower fonts. So I'm using the black arrow, highlighting the entire thing, going to Pathfinder, clicking that three dot menu and then divide. And then one last time on this very bottom one, exact same steps, Pathfinder, three dot menu, and then divide. And then for each one of these that I haven't ungrouped, I'm just going to right click and then ungroup. And remember if you're using a trackpad or some kind of mouse without a right click, I think if you hold option on a Mac, it'll go ahead and bring up this menu in order to let you ungroup. So now these are all ungroup. And if you just use that black arrow and highlight either the very top or the very bottom of the letters, you can go ahead and select those and then just move them up a little bit. I'm holding shift as I do that. So they stay perfectly aligned to the text below. But now we have three different variations of split type. So we have the black font weight on top, the bold below that, and then the regular is at the very bottom. So with these, now it's kind of the fun part where we can just mix and match these different weights of fonts to make a variation that looks like my example over here. And as a starting point, what I found helpful for myself is I just started with, for example, the entire bottom section of the black. So I'll hold shift as I drag this down just to bring it over here and I'm holding shift just so these are all perfectly aligned on top of each other. They won't be totally perfect as we get going, but it's a good rough estimate. And then you can just select whichever weight of font you want, whether it's the bold, which is right here or the regular, which is below it and start dragging these together. So you can click just the top of the letter you want to move, click, hold and drag that down. In this case, I'm holding shift and that'll actually bring us that letter down here. But I actually think what I did also to keep all the text on a very similar plane is I just took this entire row and dragged that down and left a little bit of gap. And then perhaps I zoomed in by hitting control plus or command plus and control minus or command minus lets you zoom out. I then just go in here, click an individual letter and then use my keyboard arrows, either left or right to sort of realign these to look a little bit closer to how I wanted them to look in the end. So this case right here, we have the regular version of the font on top and then the black, which is the boldest of the bold version on the bottom. And then I can just pick and choose from this bold one, however I want to, to start switching that up. So I can take the top of this letter right here. And then the good thing about having all these already on this line is you can just drag this so you can see that it aligns perfectly with the other version of the font on top. In this case, you can see that there's this extra, which is just the additional one that I had. So I'm just going to click that and sort of move it out of the way. An alternative way you could do that is if you still had the, the bolder version on top or whatever other letter on top, you can hit control X on a PC or command X on a Mac, which will cut it. So then you can just see what was ever below it and then move that out of the way. I'm also holding shift as I move it that way to keep it perfectly aligned in case I want to move it back later on and then hit control F on a PC or command F on a Mac to paste in place. And then it just pastes it in place. So it makes it really easy to swap these letters out pretty fast. So I just go around sort of dragging these letters over each other until it looks the way I want it to look. In this case, I moved two of the exact same ones on top of each other. So it's kind of like you're just building a puzzle with different pieces now. And it's actually kind of fun to see what does or doesn't look the way you want it to look for the type of effect that you are going after. 
So I won't go through continuing to do this, but it's really just a matter of mixing and matching these pieces until you get an end design that you think looks cool, in which case this was my final for this tutorial. So feel free to play around with different font weights and also completely different fonts if you want an even more bold version. And of course, you can do this exact same thing if I just bring this text over here super fast. I'm gonna outline it, get this line and do like a diagonal line right through the type like that. Highlight over it and then go to Pathfinder and then do the divide action, ungroup it or select it and then ungroup it. In this case, I can do my top letters right here I'm just holding shift as I click them individually. So I'm sure I'm selecting them all. And this is a very different effect, but you can go ahead and play around with it. In which case, make sure you select all the letters because they will be ungrouped as you go ahead and do this. But you can do diagonals or other shapes too. So this is actually quite easy and fast to do once you're used to doing it, just as I did over there with the diagonal split. It's just a couple quick steps. You go through it and hopefully you end up with an end result that you think is cool at the very end. But that is it for this video. If you found it helpful, feel free to hit the thumbs up button to like the video and let me know that you liked it. And also if you wanna see more content like this in the future, please consider subscribing. I'll do my best to keep creating new content just like this in the future. But that's all I have for this one. Thank you so much for watching.